What I want to do in this video is something similar to a previous video we did where I'm going to give you the graph of function f. We're not going to give you a formula. We're just looking at the graph right here. And we want to identify what does the derivative of this graph f look like based upon the graph f. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look for where places where the derivative would be undefined. So we've learned previously that the derivative so f prime of x here, it does not exist when a couple of things happen. First, you have discontinuities, right? Or if there's any place where the function is discontinuous, where f is discontinuous, then the derivative will likewise be uh, undefined. For which, when we look at this graph right here, it's completely continuous. There's no problem with continuity whatsoever. Uh, another thing we have to look for is going to be sharp corners. Uh, places where the function's not smooth. And we see a couple of those, and we see at least one here on the graph. You can see there's a sharp corner right here. Um, another place which might be suspicious would be right here, but you actually see that the transition from curve to flat is actually smooth. There's no corner right there. So we did get one place where the function's discontinued, or well, the derivative will be undefined. Uh, so it's not differentiable at that point, x equals three. And then the other thing we have to look for is gonna be vertical tangent lines vertical tangents, which our graph has, we can see some of those right there. There actually would be a vertical tangent line right here, but it's already a corner, so we're throwing that one out. Um, there's gonna be a vertical tangent line right here at x equals negative two. There's also a vertical tangent line at x equals negative six. So if we summarize what we've discovered so far, we see that our function will be, the derivative will be undefined at x equals negative six, at x equals negative two, and at three. And so some things we should then compare when we look at these graphs together is that when you have a vertical tangent line on the function, that corresponds to a vertical asymptote to the derivative. So when you take x equals negative 6, you're going to get a vertical tangent line at the location. So I'm just going to add that to my picture here. The picture on my right is going to be the derivative. So at x equals 6, there's a vertical tangent line. There was also one at x equals negative 2. equals negative two. And then also, like I said, at this point, at this point over here, three, if you approach from the right, there is gonna be this vertical tangent line. There's also a horizontal tangent line from the left. Again, this is the reason why sharp corners are a problem. The left approach of the tangent line will disagree from the right approach. The left approach wants to be horizontal. The right approach wants to be vertical. So we're gonna see something very bizarre in our graph when we look at that, but it turns out there's gonna be a vertical asymptote on the derivative likewise at x equals three. So we're gonna prepare for those things as well. So let's look at some other weird behavior that's happening on this graph. What's happening here at x equals three? Because of the sharp corner, the approach from the left wants to be zero. The approach from the right wants to be a vertical asymptote. So what we see is as you approach x equals three from the left, well, everywhere in this sector right here is gonna be flat. It's completely flat, it's a constant region. The derivative is gonna be zero in all of those locations. So what we see on our graph as we try to plot it, is that from x equals zero to x equals three, the function is completely flat. We see this right here, completely flat. And I'm gonna put an open dot right there because the function is undefined at x equals three. Um, on the other hand, if we are to the right of f of x, or right of, excuse me, x equals three, we're gonna have this vertical tangent line. It's gonna be important whether it's positive or negative. We're a little bit to the, to the, to the right there. We see that it's gonna be a negative slope. And so what this tells us is we approach x equals three on the derivative from the right, we're gonna be going towards negative infinity. So we're coming down like this. And then if we kind of finish this up, what's happening as we get closer and closer to x equals six, it's gonna get flatter, flatter, flatter. There's gonna be a horizontal uh, tangent line at x equals six. And so that's going to be an x-intercept on our graph right here. So we see with our function, I'm going to erase this part and try again. We're going to see some type of asymptotic behavior looking something like this. All right. Come back to this point right here. Uh, x equals 0 is kind of curious to us, and also negative 2 is curious. We see that when we're a little bit to the left of negative 2, right, we're going to have a positive slope. Uh, that's a positive tangent line, very, very steep. So we're going to be really close to infinity over here. But then as we get closer and closer to zero, this thing's gonna flatten out to be horizontal. So what we see would be a function looks something like this. So these this will come here and touch at the origin, zero, zero. And as you approach x equals negative two from the right, you're gonna be positive infinity. 
All right, so the last thing I want to show you here is notice that at negative 4, there's a horizontal tangent line. That's going to be an x-intercept of the derivative. So we anticipate an x-intercept right here. If you're a little bit to the right, excuse me, if you're a little bit to the left of negative 2, that's going to be a positive tangent. And so we should be close to infinity over here. On the other hand, if you are a little bit to the right of negative 6, that's going to be a negative slope, and so we should be a little bit over here. So kind of putting those together and connecting in a nice smooth way, we're going to get a picture that kind of looks like a tangent curve. We get something like this here in green. And this sort of monstrosity of a function um, would be the graph of f prime right here. I don't want you to necessarily take my word for it, and also because my picture might not be the best drawn right here. Let's look at a computer-generated image of these things. So you see again the function f that we had from before, and now graph to the right, we have a picture of its derivative with all those behaviors we saw there. And so this can get a little bit messy, a little bit confusing, but the important part is that we can derive the picture of the derivative from the function f. And that's why we call it the derivative, because it is derived from that original function. And so that's going to end our trilogy in lectures 16, 17, and 18. Uh, I hope you enjoyed all of this, learning about the derivative. Uh, for our lecture series, Math 1210, in Chapter 3, we're going to talk a lot more about the derivative and focus on techniques we can use to make our computations of derivative much more, much more efficient. So please take a look for those links right now. Um, if you've learned anything about the derivative in these videos, feel free to hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this in the future. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the comments, and I'll be happy to answer them uh, as soon as I can. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.